there was a crisis in the nation of Israel. And they said, we need some help. We, need, we got Philistines uh, trying to attack us. We got things coming on. And God says, trust me. Trust me to be your king. Trust me to give you liberty. Trust me to give you wisdom. I will make you prosperous. I will give you the ability to prosper so you can be generous to other nations, a light amongst the darkness. He said, well, what other options are there? Well, let's go with that one, shouldn't we? No, let's go with something else. So they turned to Samuel and they said, Samuel, we want a king. We want a king. The other nations have a king. Why can't we have a king? He says, let God be your king. No, we like the prestige of having a king and sort of people dancing around and you know, having a big king ceremony. Can we do that? So Samuel says, I'll talk to God. And here's what they said. They said, make us a king to judge us all the nations. And the Lord said to Samuel, Samuel, you shall solemnly forewarn them. Show them the behavior of a king who's gonna reign over them. Let me tell you what happens. I don't think it means what you think it means. I don't think you want what you think you think you want. Let me tell you what a king will do. Now keep in mind at this point, there's no government or king in place. So there's no government or king. So Samuel says, here's what will happen if you have a government. Remember, governments have no money. The king didn't even exist yet. Since governments have no money, they can only borrow in three ways. They either tax the producers. Who are the producers? Now today we think, well, taxing the rich. The producers were the poor, the farmers, the middle class. And God's saying, you don't want a king because the king will take from your produce. He will take from what you produce. He will tax it. And what used to be yours, property rights, will now become his. Look how many times he says it in the verse. Samuel said, he will take. What's he going to take? Your sons and daughters. He will point them to his chariots and to his horsemen. He will set some to plow his ground. What do you mean my ground? Where'd he get the ground? He got it from you. Where'd he get the sons? He got it from you to reap his harvest. Well, he didn't need a harvest before. No, he didn't need a harvest before, but you start a king. Now he needs to consume your goods. He's gonna take them and he's going to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. Well, he didn't have any chariots before. See, he's gonna consume. He's gonna take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He's going to take the best of your fields. Your fields are now going to be his fields. Your vineyards will now be his vineyards. And he's going to give them to his servants. What God's saying is, you're about to form a giant consuming mechanism called the king government. And whether it's kings or pharaohs, governments consume and take from the producers. So he gives this whole warning and he says, let me go on. He's going to take a tenth of your grain your vintage, he's going to give it to his officers, his servants. He's going to take your finest young men, your donkeys, he's going to put them to work. He's going to take a tenth of your sheep. That's a lot of tenths. A tenth, a tenth, a tenth, a tenth. And then he says, and you will be his servants. You'll be enslaved to him. Now it may sound like, look at all the security, look at all the way he's providing for me, look at the way the king's going to take care of us. But whatever he offers in security, he will take away your liberty. He will take away your prosperity and he will take away your generosity. So Samuel finishes this speech, probably felt like, wow, I did a good job. That sounds like good wisdom. People are gonna listen to me. And he says, so? Are we gonna listen to God who says, don't get enslaved to a king? Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, no, we will have a king over us. Sounds like my five-year-old. No, I don't care what you say. I want a king. I want that security. God says, you don't. You do not want that in your life. You don't want to take that path. You don't want to go down that road. And all through history, Christ followers have come and said, we want limited government. You know why? You know why we diversified power in the Constitution? Because we know at the heart of each person is sinfulness. And whenever you put one person in power, they find a way to manipulate the system to take from the producers, the farmers, the poor, the middle class, the rich, they take from them to consume for themselves. 